Hello, I'm Kevin Anzenberger, and it's time for the sports interview. Today, my guest is Nicole Powell, a junior swimmer on the dominant women's swim team. Nicole, thanks for being here, and what's going on? It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's get to business. Okay. Um, last Saturday, you guys come off a swim meet uh, at Mars Hill College, mm -hmm. where you faced Mars Hill and King University, and it wasn't even close. You guys demolished. <laughs> and actually, this whole season, you guys have been just outstanding victories against your opponents, with the exception of Carson Newman. But I just want to know, what is your mindset going into these cakewalks of victories? Uh, you know, you're winning by over 100 points. Um, it's something that we struggle with a lot because it's hard to go in and race and not, um, not try to race to their ability because it would be very easy for us to go in and just kind of play around in the pool and finish first. Um, but Dave always tells us it's not about um, – how like how fast they can go it's about how fast we can go and so as a team we try to push each other and race our teammates um, for the most part and even in those cases sometimes it doesn't work out but uh, we just try to race each other some we had one and you know Dave basically told us this is just like a normal Saturday practice where <laughs> we're just gonna go off the block see how fast we can go and not worry about where they are so a lot of times we just kind of ignore the competition and race each other Absolutely, and I, I got to ask you, you mentioned uh, Dave. I don't know if he's cool with me calling him that. But <laughs> is, yeah, is he cool with that? Uh, it's, it's no coach, it's no, just Dave? No, no, it's Dave. Um, he tells us that's his name, that's what we'll call him. I don't know if that's what he went by when he was D1, but here he's yeah. just Dave. <laughs> okay, so for our viewers, uh, it is, it's just Dave. So. But um, on, on the other side of the spectrum, um, you guys did have a loss this year, something mm -hmm. that you're not accustomed to doing. Um, how, what was the team's reaction to that? Um, that in that situ situation, um, we they fully expected to dominate us, um, much like we've dominated our competition. They're a D2 school with a lot of scholarship money, and so most of their swimmers have scholarships. Um, whereas here, we're just recruited for academics and then um, swimming. So they kind of expected to slaughter us, and the first relay went into the water, and we ended up winning the first relay. And Dave just looked at me, and he's like. I did not think that was going to happen, and I was like, I don't think they did either, and I think that's the only reason we won. And so that one was a kind of a different mindset where we went in racing them, knowing we probably weren't going to win, and ended up actually doing better than we were expected to, just because of the um, their talent and their scholarship money. And sometimes it is easier to race when you have nothing to lose going mm -hmm. against a D2 team like that. And now currently, um, where we're at in the season, the regular season is now over, and we're in a two-week taper period is what they call it. Um, could you describe that process? What, what, is, a, what is a taper period? Um, for swimmers, taper is probably the best word that you can ever hear. Um, it's where you decrease your yardage that we swim um, and you increase the amount of rest that you get. So you get a lot more rest in between um, sets that we do. And then you keep the same intensity. So a lot of people think it's just easy swimming. That's not the case. You still want to race. Um, you still go hard, but you get a lot more breaks and it's not as many yards. So it's where your body kind of gets to recover and you build back um, your muscles and you kind of you just let go and um, you focus on the, the minor details. Like we'll do a lot more turn work and start work these two weeks getting ready for the championship meet. So now our strength and conditioning coach, Coach Bullock, has probably got to be his nightmare. He probably <laughs> has nightmare of taper period. But as we go into that ODAC tournament and we've had such a dominant, um, dominant season, surely we must be expected to dominate that tournament. One would hope um, the way that ODAX is scored, you get to, each team gets to score 18 swimmers. And so it's up to their coach um, and the ability of the swimmers where they place them in events. But unfortunately, we only have 16 swimmers, so we'll get to score all of those. But teams like Washington Lee and Randolph Macon and um, Bridgewater, teams like that, they'll have more than 18 people. So they get to pick their top 18 swimmers to score, and they'll do that based on where they can place the top. Um, it, like the top spots and so it's I won't say it's impossible for us to win but um, it's gonna be pretty hard to compete two players down to be able to win but last year we placed second and that's where we'll likely place again this year so geez it's an emotional roller coaster being on the <laughs> swim team you guys have lost against a D2 team you dominate every swim meet and now we're not even supposed to win the ODEX um, going into ODEX uh, our season from what I understand, is not over. No. Um, um, swimming works a little bit different than other sports. It's not about how the team finishes at ODAX based on where we'll move from there. It's all individual races. 
And so there are cuts to get to nationals, and there's A cuts and B cuts. If you make the A cut, you automatically get to go to nationals. And then um, and we have some relays that are close to that. And so our hope is that we can get a relay qualified for nationals. And in that case, anyone that's on that relay and has B cut will also get to go. And last year we had um, Michaela Nolte and Allison Fowler both had B cuts. And so if our relay had placed, they would have been able to swim at nationals. So our hope is this year to get our relay to nationals and then give them a chance to swim. And that will take our season to like the middle of March. So the rest of us will still get to swim by NCAA rules, but we won't get to compete at nationals. Now, it's, it's pretty obvious to you and me that this school is, is a football school. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our football. Um, however, women's swimming, as long as I've been here, has been the most dominant sport I've ever seen. Um, you know, we only lost one meet this year. Uh, we're going to finish second in the ODAC. That's better than any other sport here. And we're going to compete on the national level. How are your feelings of just the reverse popularity? There's so much popularity in football and basketball, but, I mean, honestly, the women's swimming team is better. It's been hard. Um, coming in my freshman year was the first year that um, Dave was here, and so he was kind of trying to rebuild the team and rebuild it, like, have a different attitude. And so that's what really we've really tried to work on is um, not just getting wins and not just, um, you know, being the team that gets victories, but we want to work on making sure that we have the, um, the drive to, to come to practice every day and to work hard. And we have morning practices three days a week from September to our last one was Friday. So um, we put in a lot of effort in to get those wins. And while some of them have been really easy um, victories, we do put in the effort so that at the end of the year we can really um, show the conference what we have. Now, you've told me you've had a, uh, like a pre-swim, pre-game ritual. Uh -huh. uh, let's see it. Okay. Right. So everybody has what they do right before their race. You, everybody knows Michael Phelps. He does, like, the big arm swings. Yeah. So you got to, you got to, you hit your thighs like this, and then you shake out your arms. This is what I do. And then I pop my neck, and then I push my goggles on, and then I get up on the block. All right. Well, <laughs> I actually need a pre-game ritual for this show. So, I mean, if you could okay. teach me that. If, okay. If we can get a... a Shot on camera too here. What, what's what's my first okay. move? Okay, so you you hit out your quads. All right, all right. Okay, and then you gotta shake your elbows out. All right. Pop your neck. Can't really do that. <laughs> and then you're ready to go. All right. Well, now that the whole campus sees that uh, Kevin Ansberger has no rhythm, um, for Nicole Powell, I'm Kevin Ansberger. I'll send it over to the news desk. <laughs> 